Monkey. Now, Malik Scott has commented on the possibility of Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua and not necessarily making the fight happen, but how he would see the fight unfolding. And this is what he said. The lack of mental strength may not be there right now because he lost two times to a smaller guy. And obviously he's talking about Anthony Joshua. So to go against that specimen called Deontay Wilder, you may need to build yourself up to take on that kind of fight. And I get it. But the advantages and things I see Deontay doing to whatever AJ shows up. Mentally tough, not mentally tough. It's a three round fight in my opinion. Now, after I seen this, I was pondering upon the possibility of a Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua matchup. And I was thinking, well, how does the fight unfold? And for me, there's only two outcomes I see in a matchup between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua. Now this is just my opinion, comment down your opinion in the comment section down below. This fight is not going the distance if it does happen. One of these guys is getting knocked out and they're getting knocked out cold. And I could see a knockout for both fighters. Let me first explain how I believe a Deontay Wilder could beat Joshua and how the fight would have to unfold in order for Wilder to KO Joshua. Now, if Joshua is hesitant, if he isn't confident in himself, if he isn't closing the distance, if he's fighting at, you know, long range, Deontay Wilder is like a sniper rifle. He'll catch Anthony Joshua eventually because Anthony Joshua doesn't move his head off the center line at all times. You know, he was trying to do it a little bit against Alexander Usyk, but he just can't maintain it throughout the course of 12 rounds. So if... It's a tentative fight. If they're both jabbing, if they're both boxing on the outside, Wilder will catch Joshua either coming in or he'll just catch him from distance. Similar to the Ortiz fight. Ortiz gave um, Wilder too much time and space in the second fight. He wasn't closing the distance between him and Deontay Wilder and then eventually Wilder caught him lacking. Now, I'm going to tell you a second outcome that I have envisioned if Deontay Wilder and Joshua to, were to fight. And that's a KO for Anthony Joshua. Now, in order for someone like Anthony Joshua to beat Deontay Wilder, let's look at Joshua's strengths. Joshua has a good inside game, and Deontay Wilder doesn't have a good inside game. We know that for a fact. If you're objective and you understand boxing, you can see that. Joshua has better coordination and better footwork than Wilder. Joshua is just a fundamentally better fighter, but that doesn't necessarily mean he would win the fight, by the way. I'd still probably uh, favor Wilder if you just wanted to know. But yeah, Wilder is not good on the back foot. Joshua can push Wilder back. He can fight mid to close range and he can un unload punches on bunches. Tyson Fury was able to get the better of Deontay Wilder up close. Joshua is a lot better up close than Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury just doesn't have the coordination. He doesn't have the same level of punching power. I think we saw it in the Derek Chisora fight. And he doesn't have the punch quality or variation, should I say, as Anthony Joshua. For instance, Fury's got a good jab. He's got a pretty good right hand. Joshua's got a decent jab. He's got a good right hand. But what Joshua has that Fury doesn't have is he has uppercuts and hooks. Look at when Joshua dropped Vladimir Klitschko. Look at when he knocked out Vladimir Klitschko. Look at when Anthony Joshua knocked down Andrew Ruiz Jr. It was an uppercut and then a hook. You know, he put Ruiz down. It was a cold knockdown. Obviously, he proceeded to get knocked out badly in the fight. But you can see the hand speed, the coordination, and, you know, the punch quality and the punch variation from Anthony Joshua. In comparison to Deontay Wilder, he's not very coordinated. So he's really not dangerous up close. Wilder's good when you give him all the time and space in the world. But if you put him under pressure, you know, you make him, you know, you put him on edge a bit. You throw punches from several angles. I do believe you can get to Deontay Wilder. And maybe Wilder's lost some punch resistance. And maybe Joshua has lost some punch resistance. If this fight were to take place when they were both undefeated, I would have favoured... I favour Deontay Wilder either way. If the fight happens 2023, I favour Wilder. 
if the fight happened in 2018, I probably would have favoured Wilder because Joshua was too heavy back then. You know, 2017, 2018. I believe Joshua was about, what, 254 for the Carlos Takam fight. I don't remember what exact year it was. I think it was around 2017. If they were to fight at that point in time, Wilder was extremely light and he was very fast. A lot faster than we'd seen him in the second and third Tyson Fury fight. And he was also a lot more durable. He obviously had better punch resistance because he wasn't, you know, he hadn't been knocked out. He hadn't taken any punishment up to that point. And if Joshua tried to implement the tactics he used against Joseph Parker, he just would have got caught, you know, because he would have given Wilder too much time and too much space and allowed Wilder to set up the right hand. If you put Wilder under pressure, he can't really set up the right hand. Though, Wilder can catch you coming in. That's the dangerous thing about Deontay Wilder. Even though, you know, I would favor Joshua if he were to pressure Deontay Wilder and fight the fight at mid to close range. Remember when Wilder dropped Tyson Fury? I believe it was the first time he um, in the third fight. The first knockdown from Wilder in the third Tyson Fury fight. He caught Tyson Fury coming in. Tyson Fury walked into a massive right hand. And we literally seen Tyson Fury's belly and his body just jiggle. Because, you know, it was he was shell-shocked by hitting... He got hit so hard by Deontay Wilder on that occasion. So, yeah, if Joshua sits off Wilder, Wilder will KO him. If Joshua's able to close the distance, make it more scrappy, get inside Deontay Wilder, get under Deontay Wilder and land punches and combinations, that's where I believe Joshua would win the fight. But that's just me trying to be objective, trying to see how the fight would unfold for both fighters. Again, I would favor Deontay Wilder, and that's because of Joshua's lack of confidence. Joshua isn't sure of himself. If Joshua was sure of himself, and he... he I don't want to say he stuck to one style, because great fighters do need to make adjustments. But if he knew what style to implement against Deontay Wilder, and if I knew 100% that Joshua is going to close the distance against Wilder and put him under pressure because, you know, that's the best thing for him to do, then I would actually favor Anthony Joshua. But because Joshua is so unsure of himself and Wilder is still so dangerous, we saw Wilder hurt in the third fight against Fury and he was still coming back with some nice shots against Tyson Fury, you know. I would give the slight edge to Deontay Wilder. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like. Most of my viewers who do watch the channel aren't subscribed, so don't be a ninja, ninja watcher. Help me get them subs up. Help me get to 500 subscribers. All right, guys, peace.